Hi everyone, my name is Bryce Roberts, and this is my final video project. Von Gerke's disease, also known as glycogen storage disease type 1, is a condition where the body is unable to break down glycogen. Individuals with this disease have a deficiency in an enzyme or transporter involved in glycogen breakdown. This condition usually appears in infants around the age of three to four months. At this time, they'll begin sleeping throughout the night and the fasting that occurs during sleep will lead to lower blood glucose levels and thus glucagon signaling. The mutation causes an error related to the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to glucose. So we know that we have a hard time dealing with glucose 6-phosphate whenever it's present inside the liver cell. So let's look at how we get glucose 6-phosphate inside of the cell in the first place. Glucose 6-phosphate becomes present in two ways. Transport of free glucose from the blood. After a carbohydrate-rich meal, we know that insulin signaling will begin the uptake of glucose into the liver cell for glycogen synthesis. And two, the action of glycogen breakdown enzymes. So we know that once glycogen is present, it'll be broken down and we'll have a molecule of glucose 6-phosphate. The problem is, during glucagon signaling, we can't simply convert glucose 6-phosphate to glucose inside the cytosol. We must first transfer it inside the endoplasmic reticulum. We can do that through the action of the glucose 6-phosphate transporter 1. And we see it happening here. And once the glucose 6-phosphate is inside of the ER, we can use glucose 6-phosphatase to convert our glucose 6-phosphate into glucose and an inorganic phosphate. So this process occurring in the ER will then transport our glucose molecule into the cytosol via the glucose transporter. And once inside the cytosol, it can leave the liver cell and be used by the body. So what causes glycogen storage disease type one? It turns out there's two different ways that glycogen storage disease type one can occur. Type 1A is a deficiency of our glucose 6-phosphatase, right here. And type 2, type 1B is a deficiency of our G6P T1, remember, our transporter 1. So we know that both of these occurring will lead to increased glucose 6-phosphate in the cell. And we also know that when glucose 6-phosphate is more present inside the cell and it cannot go to the glucose pathway, it must go somewhere else. So let's take a look at how this occurs. Glycogen is converted to glucose 6-phosphate once it's broken apart, producing a free molecule of glucose and glucose 1-phosphate. And through the action of phosphoglucomutase, we get our glucose 6-phosphate. So this becomes extremely upregulated inside the cell. And because of our deficiency in type 1A and type 1B, we cannot take the pathway to glucose. So our glucose 6-phosphate will undergo glycolysis and produce pyruvate, and increased levels of pyruvate will need to be taken into the pathways of acetyl-CoA, lactate, and alanine. So an increase in acetyl-CoA will eventually overwhelm the citric acid cycle. And once this occurs, it'll only have two other places to go. So the acetyl-CoA will then produce cholesterol and triacylglycerol in this disease. And the production of these intermediates are alanine, cholesterol, triacylglycerol, and lactate will begin to present some of our symptoms. We also have our glucose 6-phosphate undergoing the pentose phosphate pathway where ribose 5-phosphate will be produced and then uric acid. And additionally, we can look at the symptoms that occur and they will produce things such as hyperuricemia, hyperlipidemia, hypoglycemia, and lactic acidosis from our lactate here. 
And so these symptoms will begin to appear and cause things such as a descended abdomen because of the relative size of the liver and hypoglycemia, for instance, causing seizures in infants. So we know that a buildup of adjacent pathway intermediates quickly occurs. Production of uric acid, cholesterol, triglycerol, and lactate lead to the symptoms of the diagnosis. So the condition is treatable, however. The goal of treatment is to avoid low blood sugar. We can imagine that when we avoid low blood sugar, that glucagon does not need a signal, and therefore we will limit the amount of intermediates that are built up, and we won't undergo these symptoms of the diagnosis. So the errors downstream of the glucagon signaling pathway are avoided. So if we treat this disease, by giving patients some slow digesting carbohydrates, we can ensure that the blood glucose levels don't drop to a low enough level where glucagon begins to signal and we have errors in our pathway associated with the disease. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you.